our program, From House to House. Won't you come in and join us for a while in the Word? Greetings to you in our precious Lord's name. I'm Carol Brooke, and I want to invite you. Would you join us for a while in the Word of God? We're going to begin a brand new series today, ladies. We're so glad to have you participate with our filming. And also, you may appreciate uh, the beautiful home of Kevin and Talitha Bear, and that is the backdrop for our programming today. We're going to begin a new series, and we're calling this one Clogged Arteries. Rather a strange title, isn't it? But that's what the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about as I was seeking His face concerning preparation for what I'm to share with you next. And uh, this was kind of a um, different kind of a thought the Lord gave to me. Um, I was drawn to go to Isaiah 58, ladies. And I was thinking of all the wonderful promises that we underline in our Bibles as we study the things that God says He would do for us. But you know what the Holy Spirit dealt with me was that I needed to look more closely at the things that were required in order for those promises to come to pass. That there were conditions to be met. I, then I began to notice as I read that text, ladies, in Isaiah 58, how that the Lord would say, if you will do so and so, then I will do so and so. Oh, okay, Lord. So this is like a contract. We've got a part, and you've got a part, and you're not going to do your part if we don't do our part, right? And so this series is going to be uh, dealing with things that perhaps are hindering our prayers being answered because we're neglecting to take care of things the Lord requires um, it may deal with reasons why there's not the fruitfulness in our life that would, we would be expecting to take place in our life. Uh, there could be some hindrances as to why the power of God isn't manifested in us as individuals and operative as it ought to be as persons uh, claiming to be filled with the Spirit or our churches at large. Why the power of God isn't being demonstrated in, in many areas as it ought to be. Uh, also, maybe a reason why, ladies, some of us don't have the joy we ought to have, because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And there, there are many believers who don't seem to feel a sense of satisfaction. Why? We need to investigate some reasons why, if things aren't as the Word says they ought to be. Now, I'm not talking about us being just totally perfect, with no faults, with no errors, no mistakes, no hang-ups. You know, we're on our way, right? We're, we're being prepared by the Holy Spirit. But there's some very definite things in this Isaiah 58 that we need to check out and see if they aren't things that we could take care of and get moved out of the way so that the Spirit of God could do His work in us and do His works through us, because that's what really, we really want. La ladies, isn't that true? Don't you want the works of God to be manifest in your life? I know I hunger for that. So we're going to talk about clogged arteries, and we're going to use some medical things as illustrations of that which would be depicted in the spiritual. So I hope you can do that with me. Uh, transfer over from the practical and the natural to the spiritual picture. Now, today is going to be a lesson number one, of course, and the title of this particular lesson, ladies, is going to be, Let's Do a Coronary Exam. Now, I, I'm going to define some of the medical words I'm going to use for the sake of those who perhaps are not educated on those words. Coronary has to do with the heart and the arteries of our heart. So, let's do a coronary exam. In other words, let the Holy Spirit through the Word begin to examine and see if there are perhaps some 
areas that are blocking and the passage is not clear and flowing as it ought to, this would be uh, considering a spiritual exam in our life. I'm going to have you turn, ladies. Uh, we're not going to go yet to Isaiah 58, which is going to be our whole basic chapter we're going to study from. But, uh, and for background, let's start with turning to Proverbs, the 14th chapter and the 30th verse, and it speaks of the heart. You see, we've got the heart muscle. And then out of that are those arteries that are so critical that the blood that is pumped by the heart flows out through and it keeps us existing. I was amazed as I began to study this, ladies, how much the Bible speaks about our heart, our heart. And it's depicting the natural carried over into a spiritual realm. Okay? So... I'm going to have you turn Proverbs 14, verse 30, and I'm going to read it from the King James, and we're going to see what it has to say about having a sound heart. We want a healthy heart, don't we? And the arteries to be clean and clear so the power of the blood of Jesus Christ can flow right through in a spiritual sense. It says, a sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Well, I just want to draw from the first part of that verse where it's making very clear that a sound heart, which would have to do with healthy, wholesome heart, is the very life of the flesh or of the body. Spiritually, it's just like it is in the natural. If you've got a sick heart, you're going to have a sick body. You're going to have a sick individual who's, who's handicapped in ways. On, on the spiritual realm and level, if you've got a sound heart spiritually between you and God and, and your ways please God, then there's going to be his life, that life that he spoke of that he said we could have, that he would give us life and life more abundantly. True? That's what he promised. If the heart is sound, then that life, that abundant life is going to be operative within us spiritually as individuals. Because a sound heart is the life of the flesh. If you are not experiencing the flow of the life of Christ through your life as ought to be, we maybe need to go and have a coronary exam and see what is blocking, what is hindering. You know, as we grow older especially, many of us, we uh, find as we have medical checkups, that we have a lot of plaque in our arteries. And what that is, that is a fatty substance. It's sticky and it, it just clings in the arteries and it begins to build and pretty soon it narrows the passageway that the blood needs to flow through. And if that gets bad enough and build up too much, it can stop the blood from flowing properly to the degree that you can have a heart attack or even heart failure. And that happens to many people. You hear of them having a real uh, problem with plaque in their veins, in the natural. Spiritually, children of God, we can have a spiritual plaque. If you'll let me use that as an illustration, in our spiritual arteries so that the power of the blood of Jesus Christ isn't flowing through freely. And we need it to flow through freely so that life that's abundant that he promised us will be operative in our life and through our life. I'm concerned as to why when I pray, if I'm not getting answers, I'm concerned if I'm not seeing fruit as the Lord promised we should have fruit. I'm concerned if I come up against situations and there doesn't seem the power of the Holy Spirit working and operative in my life. I'm concerned if I seem to lack in the joy and the satisfaction of the things of the Lord, then I know there's something blocking my spiritual arteries. There's something in the way hindering and restricting the flow of the life of Christ through me. Can you imagine how this world would be shook up? turned upside down, as it says in the New Testament, by the, the, the apostles and the disciples. Can you imagine what would happen if the body of Christ as a whole, our arteries were flushed out, and all the things that would clog, that all that spiritual sticky 
plaque was flushed out and the power of the blood of Jesus Christ could rush and flow right out through us. Can you imagine how dynamic that would be? How we would be uh, used of God in a powerful way to shake the hearts and the minds of men, to cause them to become God conscious instead of God marker, mockers. I want us to turn, ladies, to some other scriptures now. And if you'll move right along with me, I appreciate it. Let's go right on over to the Old Testament, to the book of Leviticus. And we're going to look at the 17th chapter there. And the 11th verse, and it again speaks of the blood. It speaks of the blood, the significance of the blood in our bodies. And there, using the King James Version, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Now, without getting into all the other parts, I just want to take that stipulated fact right there up front, that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Doesn't that tie in with what we just read in Proverbs? How that a sound heart is the life. So that heart's got to be able to pump that blood through those arteries. So the life is there. It's critical. It's so critical for life to be manifest that that heart's operating right, that it's sound, and that the arteries are cleared out so that there's no blockage and the life can be manifest. Now, because of the significance of that happening in the natural as well as in our spiritual life, I want us to look at another bit of instruction we get out of Proverbs, the fourth chapter, verse 23, and I'm going to read it first from the King James. And it says, Keep the heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Out of the heart are the issues of life. Of life. When you read that in the Amplified, it says, Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. You could, so you could use either the word issues of life, or, which in essence is saying the springs of life, but it's warning us that we have got to guard and watch our heart, check, examine our heart. You say, Well, Carol, um, what are you talking about? Well, you know, when we speak of our hearts spiritually, you're speaking of our meditations, our thoughts, our attitudes, um, you know, our emotions, uh, the things we hold on to and that maybe we need to let go of or forgive and release. So the scripture says we need to be diligent about that and really watch our heart and make sure that we keep our heart right with God and with our fellow man. Why? Because out of it flow the springs of life. Out of it flow the issues of life, just like the blood is pumped out of the physical heart and is pushed through those arteries to keep us alive. And you know, when that stops, that old pump starts sputtering and spewing, and pretty soon it stops, what happens? The blood isn't there to keep the rest of the body alive. And pretty soon, you know, the body begins to decay. So physically, it's critical. Spiritually, it's very, very critical that we guard our heart. What are the things that the enemy would like to bring to you as temptations, as snares, to mess up your heart relationships between you and God? You need to really watch for those, examine those, and deal with those, and guard your heart, protect your heart spiritually between you and the Lord. Keep nothing between, keep nothing between your soul and your Savior. For me, I like to use this verse when I pray, ladies. Psalms 139, verse 23. It's such a familiar one to most of us, but it's a good one to know and to pray. And it wouldn't hurt to do that daily. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Yes, O God. Lest there's something I'm not seeing. Lest there's something I'm not recognizing. Maybe it's a root of bitterness starting up. Maybe it's something that I haven't been willing to forgive. Or, or a temptation that, that the enemy is bringing and I'm letting it stay for company for a while and considering it. What is it, Lord, that I'm not seeing perhaps that I need you to just search me and let the Holy Spirit reveal to me that's in my heart that needs to be dealt with and taken care of so that none of these things can be a handicap in my spiritual walk. Now, <clears throat> I want us to, to go to 
Isaiah, the 58th chapter, and we're going to begin with the first verse, and we'll begin through this series, which happens to be a 12-part series, by the way. And <clears throat> we're going to look at what things are listed there that are really important to God as he relates to us that we need to check, examine, and take care of and get it right. Because if we don't, then that free flow of the power of the blood cannot be operative in our life as it ought to be. And we're going to be, we're going to be shortchanged as we use that expression. There's um, certain things required that I hadn't necessarily really tied in with before until the Lord gave me this message and put it on my heart. He dealt with me first, believe me, ladies. I'm not just preaching this off to you. The Lord really was doing a spiritual exam in my own life because I was praying about things that really were going to take the power of God to make a difference and, and questioning why things hadn't happened yet. And so I'm examining my own heart and praying, Holy Spirit, help me to see to what things need to be adjusted. Okay, let's go to verse 1 of Isaiah 58. I was amazed how many things are really important to God that we keep right, because if not, they're going to be like plaque, that sticky, fatty substance in our spiritual arteries and block the power of the blood flowing through. It says <clears throat> in um, verse 1, it says, cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and declare to my people their transgressions and to the house of Jacob their sins. What the Spirit impressed upon me to, with, that I need to share with you and I need in my own life to be careful that I guard my heart and I do is that God wants us to speak up and speak out against sin. You say, oh yeah, there's a lot of sin out there among the sinners in the world. Oh, this here, when you read it, child of God, this has to do with God's people. Ooh, and you say, oh, well, Carol, I, I don't want to offend, and I got to be so careful. I don't want to say anything to somebody that's a child of God about sin in their life. Well, especially from teaching, especially from the preaching, from the, the pulpit or over television, wherever we get the word out in our writings of spiritual materials, we need to make, care, make very sure that we're doing what God said we have to do, and that is to cry aloud. Don't spare. Let your voice be just like a trumpet and declare to my people. He's not speaking about the unbeliever. He's speaking about his own people, their transgressions, and to the house of Jacob, their sins. If we ever need messages to be stronger about the children of God dealing with sin in their life and letting the Holy Spirit deal with sin in their life, it's today because uh, there's a lot of whitewash, a lot of whitewash going on that just covers up and covers over and says, well, you know, it's not that important. You're a child of God. Pat us on the head like you'd pet a puppy dog. But God doesn't deal with sin that way. Sin cost the father the pain in his heart when he gave up his own son. And so the Lord does not take sin lightly, especially when it hangs on in the lives of his children and they tolerate it and ignore the fact that it needs to be made right. So an important thing to have taken care of is that we will speak up and speak out against sin when it's among the household of faith. We need to bring awareness. We bring, need to bring a consciousness, a conviction about the conditions of sin and the consequences of sin. I think it's a little bit on the light side right now of people hearing the consequences of sin amongst God's people. Now, this, if it's not being tended to, you know what? It's going to be like that fatty substance in the artery. You say, well, I wonder why the church, you know, they have these beautiful services, but there's not much happening. People's lives aren't being changed. Maybe there's some plaque in the artery, and that needs to be removed. Well, that's one of the things that God would look at as plaque in our, in our heart. Let's go on down, and let's see another thing, a second thing that's significant to the Lord that he will not uh, just overlook as a light thing. And that is that God won't go along with our phony pretense of being spiritual, our phony pretense of being 
religious, and dedicated to God. You see, the children of Israel had fallen into that snare when this was written, and God used the prophet Isaiah to speak to the children of God about their condition at that particular time. And this is what he says of them in its verse, ladies, Isaiah 58, verse 2 through 5. We're moving down to there. It says, Yet they seek, inquire for, and require me daily, and delight externally to know my ways, as if they were in reality a nation that did righteousness. And forsook not the cordons of their Lord. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God in visible ways. Why have we fasted, they say, and you do not see it? Why have we afflicted ourselves and you do take no knowledge of it? Behold, O Israel, on the day of your fast, when you should be grieving for your sins, you find profit in your business. And instead of stopping all work as the law implies you and your workmen should do, you extort from your hired servants a full amount of labor. The facts are that you fast only for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Fasting as you do today will not cause your voice to be heard on high. In other words, God is saying to them, you know, this religious activity that you have taken up, instead of fasting with sincerity of heart, it's just an external thing that you're doing and going through but I'm not going to acknowledge it. I'm not going to honor it. He's saying that this isn't going to make me hear your voice up on high because you don't have the motives. You don't have the sincerity and the dedication. In other words, he's saying that goes along with your activity. Children of God, it's easy to get caught up in just spiritual little routines that we have. And it looks on the outward like we're visibly, we're doing spiritual things. But if we're not careful, our heart isn't even really connected to it. It's just an external thing. And, and this to God is like a bunch of phony stuff. And God does not like and accept phony stuff. Our re religious acts of appearance, and yet insincere in heart, maybe of ceremonies, even of fastings. But if your heart isn't dedicated with it, God is not going to give it any credit. It's not going to impress God at all. In fact, it's a stench in his nostrils. This is another thing that can be plaque in the arteries of God's people. In other words, it's going to block the passageways as the heart would pump that blood on through those arteries to the rest of the body. There's going to be narrowing spots because of the plaque, that fatty substance of, of just waste. And what it's going to do, it's going to hinder. It's going to hinder. We need to examine our hearts at large as the body of Christ today and say, why is not the gospel going forth with power and bringing forth deliverance that the Lord paid the price to come to pass? Why? And unless we're willing to examine, we're going to continue on our way. And there's people that are not being reached with the power of the gospel because of our neglect Oh, we do need to have a coronary exam. We need to go to the cardiologist. Now, that's a specialist that deals with the heart and let him do some tests. In the, in the natural, if you've got heart problems, you need to have that done. But in the spirit, we need to go to the Holy Spirit and say, Oh, Holy Spirit, if there's things hindering, flush them out, move them out. Bring a change in me. You know, there's a saying in the word that from glory to glory, he's changing me. Yes, yes. He does change us from place to place as we grow in him. Yes, we're not all perfect to start out with. It's a process. It's a growing process. And more and more our life is being set apart as holy unto God. So God doesn't tolerate our, our um, phony spirituality. Look at verse 5. It says, is such a... A fast is yours what I have chosen, a day for a man to humble himself with sorrow in his soul. Is true fasting merely mechanical? Is it only to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him to indicate a condition of heart that he does not have? Will you call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? You know, we cannot fool God. We can't fool God with all our spiritual pretending and activities. Well, as we look at Psalms 44, verse 21, ladies, in the Amplified, it says, Would not God discover this? For he knows the secrets of the heart. 
God knows the secrets, and all our religiosity cannot pull the wool over God's eyes because he knows the secrets of the heart. You know what David told his son Solomon, 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9, in the King James it says, And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind, for the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. He's saying, son, just know this, that the Lord, he searcheth our hearts. Yes, he searches our hearts today. Let's let the Holy Spirit search. Is there a need for the spiritual passageways in your spiritual life to be cleared out? Things to be removed that are hindering. Oh, bring it to the Lord. He's willing. He's ready. He's eager to bring those changes in your life and in mine. Now, next time, we're going to talk about, uh, let's do an angiogram. Let's do an angiogram, which is an x-ray picture of the condition of the heart and of the arteries to see if they're healthy. Until then, God bless you and join us again for our next program, okay? Amen. Program copies available. Full set of 12 lessons on CDs, $34. DVDs, $44. Add $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. Original Carol Brook song album, audio cassettes, $10 each. CDs, $14 each. Add $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. For orders and support gifts only, call 619-445-4748. Pacific Time, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Or visit our website at www dot carolbrookministries dot com. For more information, please contact Carolbrook Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box one nine zero nine, Alpine, California, nine one nine zero three. On the internet, visit www dot carolbrookministries dot com or email carolbrook at carolbrookministries dot com. Prayer line number five four one five nine two four five three nine. Pacific time, eight a.m. through eight p.m.